<clears throat> Welcome everybody and thanks for joining us again for uh, this segment of um, Ask Me Anything. We are really um, privileged today to have a fabulous subject matter expert in the hot seat who's willing to say, go ahead, just ask me anything. I'm Patty Vargas and I'll be your host today um, in another session of our Women Lead Online Forums brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. And our session today will be you know, a little under an hour. If you've joined with video, you'll be able to see our guest and the other attendees alike. And questions and comments are always welcome. And if there's something you'd like to ask, uh, Rosemary, or you'd like to contribute it anonymously, just put it in the chat and I'd be happy to share it for you. Uh, and this is just unusual times, right? We do these online forums um, several times a month for Connected Women of Influence, but we are certainly in a time where people are spending a lot more time online, right? And in these Zoom rooms and so forth. So uh, people are getting to be very adept, very good at this. So that's, that's a good thing. So here's, here's what we're going to talk about today is um, this whole pandemic, the coronavirus, has wreaked havoc on small business finances. And during this particular segment, which Rosemary titled Coping with the Coronavirus Cash Crunch, <laughs> we're going to talk about ways to conserve cash, how do you keep your business afloat during this crazy time. And she's going to share tips about how can we cut costs, how do we do some accurate forecasting, um, and then, you know, very important, how do we apply for some financial relief through either the Small Business Administration's Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program or the Paycheck Protection Program. And so she's going to share what she knows about that. Um, let me tell you about Rosemary, though. Um, she's pretty freaking impressive, and I think you're gonna walk <laughs> away pretty impressed with her. Uh, she's the president of Momentum CFO, and Momentum CFO provides outsourced chief financial officer services to small to mid-sized businesses. And they help business owners increase profit, improve crash, cash flow, <laughs> crash flow, yeah, improve <laughs> cash flow during this crash flow, uh, plan and make smart financial decisions. So without further ado, I'm going to just hand this over to Rosemary and kick us off. What else would you like us to know about you and about your company and, and kind of what's going on in the world today? Yeah, I think you pretty much covered it. I mean, I am the president of a firm that offers outsourced CFO services to smaller businesses because a lot of smaller business owners are really excellent at whatever it is they do, but they may not have a finance or a business background, and so they need some support. Um, but depending on the size of your business, you may not want or, or be able to afford a full-time CFO. So I provide outsourced fractional services and serve a number of different clients in that capacity. Mm -hmm. um, so as Patty said, you know, today we're going to talk about coping with the coronavirus cash crunch, and this isn't intended for to be a session where I just talk exclusively. You guys can feel free to ask questions and make this completely interactive. So I think, you know, it goes without saying that coronavirus has really impacted small business finances, and many businesses are just struggling to stay afloat. Um, many businesses are completely shut down. You may be experiencing either a complete loss of revenue or a reduction in revenue, um, which means you're going to be burning through your cash faster as you have to keep spending on expenses, but you don't have the revenue coming in. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of small businesses really do not forecast cash. You know, they may manage their cash based on what's in the bank account. And that's challenging, especially during a time like this, because we need to have some insight into what cash flow and what your bank balance is going to look like, not just tomorrow, but a month from now or three months from now, so that you can plan for when these crash cr cash crunches occur. Now, of course, mm -hmm. coronavirus, no one could plan for it. Um, but I do encourage my, any client that I work with to make sure that we maintain a cash flow forecast, to have an emergency fund, so to speak, just like you would with your personal finances. So a, a cash cushion that you've saved up for four emergencies. Um, 
And then also we can look at financing options. I mean, I, I do like when clients have a working capital line of credit that they can draw upon when they do get into a situation that is difficult with cash, they have another place to turn in addition to the savings. Mm -hmm. um, so that's generally you know, the, the situation right now. Um, I think today we wanna to talk about a few different things. You know, what, what do you do when your revenue is low? How do you cut expenses? And as Patty said, you know, what are some of the financial assistance programs that are out there right now that you can apply for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and you're right. Um, it, nobody could have foreseen something like this, you know. But I I think um, it it only takes once, you know, for something like this to happen before we realize how poorly prepared we really are. Mm -hmm. And you know, when I when I've uh, thought about what do I need, what kind of cash do I need to keep my business going, what kind of cash do I need to keep my family finances afloat it's probably nothing like planning for months of being shut down, you know, right. completely. And, and it's very true that, you know, I, I talked to a small business owner yesterday who said, we may not come back. That's what we're beginning to look at now is that this yeah. may be the end of, of our business. And, um, not that they made any poor choices in the past at all, just, you know, the, the lack of understanding how long something like this could really happen or could go on. Yeah, and a lot of businesses also don't have kind of risk management plans or disaster recovery plans in place. You know, there's a lot of scrambling on the part of many businesses of, okay, what do we do now that we don't have our physical location? Yes. Um, so lots of different challenges associated with this pandemic. Yeah. So, you know, those are some of the things that we, that, that I just mentioned that you mentioned as well. Uh, mm -hmm. What are some other financial impacts that, that you are seeing people have in their small businesses? I mean, I think, I think the main thing is really just lack of available cash for, for a number of different reasons. And so I thought that today we might talk about a bunch of those different problems, you know, maybe starting with revenue, because as we've, we've learned, you know, non-essential businesses are shut down. Um, you may have reduced revenue. So what do you do? Mm -hmm. um, this is where businesses have to get creative. Um, for those of us that are service providers, it, it may be a little bit easier for us to move to virtual services and, and be doing more on Zoom. Other businesses like restaurants have to get a little more creative with the deliveries or drive by pickups. But really, I would encourage everyone to think about alternatives. You know, how can you keep your business afloat with revenue, even if you are experiencing a downturn or your physical location is shuttered. Mm -hmm. And so of course I don't have the answer for everyone. It's gonna be different for each person's business, but now is the time to definitely think creatively, think about whether you can offer online seminars or different offerings um, that you would not deliver in person, but just some other alternative ways of bringing in more income when you can't go about your normal routine. Right. right. So do, do any of you that are, that are on the call with us right now, do you have anything specific that you'd like to ask Rosemary about? Um, I've got a billion questions I can ask her, so, but I wanted to give y'all a chance as well. You know, feel free to unmute yourself and ask anything that might be on your mind right now, or you can put it in the chat box to me and I will share it as well. <clears throat> So while we wait for those, um, we can talk a little bit about cost cutting too. Um, because of course, you know, if you have lower revenue and you're trying to preserve your profit and your cash flow, you have to cut back on expenses. So what are some things you can do? Number one, now is not the time to be making major purchases. Um, if, if the purchase is not absolutely essential for your business, if you're struggling with cash, mm -hmm. postpone it. Um, you should really only be buying things that are essential for keeping your business af afloat, um, eliminating all non-essential expenses. And while that's hard to do and that's hard you know, advice to hear, if you are in a really bad cash situation, this could be the difference between your business staying afloat and it not staying afloat. So it's really important to cut back on costs. Um, there are also a number of programs out there where you can defer payments on certain things. Um, certain lenders are allowing deferred payments on loans. Um, 
as you've probably heard, even things like our federal taxes, on, even on the personal side, they are now not due until July 15th. So wherever you have an opportunity to defer payments on something, that's something you should consider. But another thing to keep in mind when you're doing that is that ultimately you will likely have to still pay that amount that you've deferred, and then that might have to be paid in a lump sum. So, you know, you may be putting these costs on layaway, so to speak, but you have to keep track of them because they will come due at some point, even though you may be postponing them right now. Mm -hmm. That's really good advice because that that is one thing that I've seen um, go around in conversations, you know, whether it's an online conversation or something that you're seeing, you know, in Facebook or, or Twitter or something where people are giving giving out bad advice, you know, mm -hmm. about, you know, just stop pay making payments. You're not going to get evicted. They're not going to take this away from you. They're not going to take that away from you. It and it, there is going to be a reckoning at some point, you know, there's, um, you know, so that's, that's good that you're calling people's attention to that. Yeah, yeah. Um, other things that you can do, I mean, and this helps on the revenue side too, is really take a close look at your accounts receivable. If you've got outstanding um, invoices and your customers haven't paid, you know, now is the time to follow up on that. Now, unfortunately, they may also be in a cash crunch and be trying to defer payments to vendors, just like I'm recommending to you. Mm -hmm. um, but if you do have some payments out there that you can collect from customers, go ahead and do that. Make sure you bill people as soon as you finish rendering services or providing the product. Right. Um, uh, there's a, a question here from Angela. Um, she'd like you to talk about the specific tax breaks from the CARES Act for small business and will we be getting refunds and so forth. Okay, so the CARES Act is something that was newly approved just last week and there are a number of parts of the CARES Act. The one that is probably most um, relevant to small businesses is called the Paycheck Protection Program. And so what that is, is it, it provides funds for small business owners to essentially help them retain all of your workers and make sure you can pay payroll and some other related costs. And so the CARES Act, this Paycheck Protection Program, I do have some information about it that I'm gonna go ahead and share, but kind of like we saw with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that occurred back in 2017, there's still a lot of unknowns. So with the Paycheck Protection Program, for example, right now, at least as of you know, an hour or so ago when I was looking online again, there is no application for it yet. So you can't even apply for it yet. You can mm -hmm. learn about it, you can get ready for it, but we don't have an application process yet, and I'm hearing from bankers that it might take another week. Um, so it can take a little while for, for the actual um, processing of the applications and the system to accept the applications to get up and running. Mm -hmm. um, but to go back to specifically what it is, um, the idea is that you look at your average monthly payroll cost from the prior year, and this program will give you two and a half times that cost as a loan that may be forgivable. Um, so what does that mean? Uh, this could turn into a grant. You might not have to pay it back. So it is, again, based on your payroll costs from the prior year. And um, they have really made the application requirements very minimal. I mean, you basically needed to, you need to have a business that existed as of the middle of February to apply. There's not gonna be a stringent criteria in terms of underwriting and loan qualification. They really want to get this money out. Um, and how can it be forgiven? So you'll apply for this, hopefully you'll get two and a half times what your average monthly payroll cost was, and then you're expected to use it on payroll, payroll related costs, on interest on mortgages, on paying your rent, and on paying your utilities. And if you use it for those specific purposes, then the loan may be forgiven dollar for dollar. Now, if you use that for other unapproved purposes, then you will probably have to pay it back. Um, also, if you have laid people off and you are not bringing them back on board after you receive these funds, the amount of forgiveness that you have may be reduced again. So it's not a guaranteed thing that it will be reduced. Um, I do have a document that I can share either in the chat or email you 
that's from the US Chamber of Commerce that goes through this in great detail and even talks about the calculation for how to determine how much you can apply for and then how much forgiveness might occur. And I was just speaking to another client this morning. He was saying, should I apply for this? And I was like, yes, I think you should. But before we do that, I want to do some of these calculations and figure out how much you might have to pay back. Um, so I wouldn't fully assume that you won't have to pay 100% of it back. You might have to pay some portion of it back. And if you do, the rates, though, are very low. I think they're capped at 4% right now. Um, so the terms are really reasonable. And um, in terms of this Paycheck Protection Program, a small business, a nonprofit, independent contractors, self-employed individuals, all sorts of people qualify. Um, you generally do have to meet the Small Business Administration's size standard for how big your business is to make sure it's considered a small business. But you can apply. There's $350 billion set aside for this program. And small businesses, depending on their size and their payroll costs, can get loans of up to $2 million, or not $2 million, $10 million that may be completely forgiven. So um, another question was, what if it's a sole proprietor or, or they are the only employee? Can they pay themselves? Can they use the money to pay their home rent? because uh, they work from their home? Uh, um, sole proprietors are eligible, you know, in the list of, of businesses and business owners that can apply. Um, I'm not sure about the paying your home rent. I mean, if you're claiming it as a business expense, that would make sense to me, but I'm not absolutely certain about that. Mm -hmm. um, again, just thinking it through logically, if you're working from your home and you're self-employed and you know, you're, you're paying for your utilities and so on and so forth for your home office, it seems like that is something that, that would qualify as one of these expenses that can be you know, something you can pay for that would be forgiven, mm -hmm. um, but I am not 100% certain of that. Okay, great. Great. Well, Any Karen, the, sorry, just a quick question to clarify. I figured it'd be easier to ask. This is Angela. I'm typing. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I figured someone else might have the same questions as me. Um, so, so I am a small business. I do work from home. Um, I've applied for a grant from the county of San Diego, but um, I'm not looking to necessarily take a loan. If it is a loan, then I would hope that it, some of it could be forgiven. Are you specifically talking about the CARES Act application that is not available, or are you talking about the SBA disaster loan application that's been circulated around? Yeah, those are two different things. So I'm specifically talking right now about the CARES Act Paycheck Protection Program, and that is the one that as of now, we do not yet have the application for because this information just came out a few days ago. Um, people are still learning about it, and, and processes are still being set up. Um, so we could talk a little bit more about Paycheck Protection Program if every, anyone has any other questions about that, but Angela, what you alluded to, the Small Business Administration Economic Injury Disaster Loans are a separate program. I mean, they're bo both run through the SBA, but it's a different type of loan. Mm -hmm. Got some questions in the chat here. Yeah, I think I got through them all. Um, and that's why Angela unmuted herself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just curious on the difference of the yeah. two and if it's worth applying for both, really. Right, and it may be worth applying for both, and you can apply for the economic injury disaster loan immediately. Um, that application is already up and running online. In fact, just in the last week or so, um, some of the application requirements have been streamlined. I had written a blog post maybe a week and a half ago about all the different forms you filled out, you need to fill out for this loan, and then I learned that they had changed. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about those economic injury disaster loans. So these are federal loans that are for working capital or cash purposes for small businesses that are suffering losses from coronavirus. And so at this point, um, small business owners in all U.S. states and territories are eligible to apply um, before you need a kind of a disaster declaration by the state, but now everyone is eligible to apply. Um, and this is a loan that right now, it's not the same as the Paycheck Protection Program where it's going to be fully forgiven. But the good news is that um, the interest rates for these loans are very low. So if you're a nonprofit, the rate is 2.75%. If you are a for-profit business, it's 3.75%. So, you know, still really good. 
um, and you can get up to $2 million for your small business for these loans. But the underwriting criteria for this is a little bit more stringent. I mean, they are going to be looking at your credit. There are a lot of, um, there's a lot of information that you have to provide. So when you sit down to do this, um, you need to have things like your financial statements from the previous year at your side. Might be good to have your tax return as well. Um, you may be asked for some additional information like your forecasted sales for the upcoming months. So you, you do need to have um, a number of pieces of information available. Um, but you can go straight to the Small Business Administration's website and apply online. Um, you could, there are other ways to apply as well, but the quickest way to do it is going to be through their online portal there. And if you want me to share my screen, please the but, or it's oh, just, yeah. would you like to see it? Sure. Okay, let's see if I can share my screen real quick. Um, We're testing the capabilities of capabilities. bandwidth. <laughs> All right. Um, so, oops, can you see my screen? Can you yes. see the disaster loan assistance? Okay. So if you go to the SBA website, or you can see the, um, URL here. Let me try to put that in the chat. Um, I don't see chat right now, so hold on for a second. But this is the, the disaster loan application. Um, the first thing that you have to do is verify that you're eligible to apply. And so you're going to choose one of these things, like you're a business with not more than 500 employees. You're, a, you're an individual. You're a sole proprietor. Um, you know, there are a number of different types of businesses and individuals that qualify for this. And there are some restrictions. You know, you can't be engaged in illegal activities. You can't derive, you know, most of your income from gambling. So there's some things like this. Um, but you'll check that off and then just hit continue and you're going to be asked some more questions. Um, one thing to note about this is that this is a pretty comprehensive loan application. And you, you'll see right here that the SBA estimates that completing this application is going to take you over two hours. Um, so be prepared, you know, grab a glass of wine and get your papers together and, and sit down at your computer and, and start pounding out these requirements and filling out the application here. Great. Okay. Let me stop the share and see if I can put that in the chat. So that's where you go to apply. Oh, no, that's not the right link. I apologize. <laughs> That's the Zoom link. Yeah. There we go. So that COVID-19 relief link is the one that you're going to use to apply for the economic injury disaster loan. Okay. Now these, all of the the paycheck protection um, and and some of these other programs that are coming into place, do they vary from state to state, or is this is there a federal umbrella over all of these? Yeah, it's a federal umbrella. So not to my knowledge, they don't vary from state to state. Okay. No. Good, good. All right. So SBA economic injury loan, you can apply now. Um, paycheck protection program, not quite yet, but, but coming soon. Um, there are also other things you can do. I mean, for example, you should, you should Google what's available to you in your industry, the specific industry that your business is in and in the specific locality. So for example, in San Diego, the city of San Diego has set up a small business relief fund that provides grants and forgivable to, you know, low interest <coughs> small businesses, again, for the same purposes, you know, providing additional cash. And those grants and loans will range from $10,000 a piece to $99,000 a piece. So in addition to these federal programs that we're talking about, like the economic injury loans and the PPP, um, definitely take some time to Google what resources are, are available to you in your area, um, because there are some specific to certain geographies, and there are also some that are specific to certain industries. Mm -hmm. um, restaurant industry, for instance, has been hit really hard um, all bars have been forced to close. And so if you Google, you know, financial assistance for restaurant industry, you're going to find some different resources for that as well. Okay. Great. Any yeah. other questions that, that you might have? Now's your, your opportunity. I'm actually going to pull up a, something else on to share the screen. As soon as I get it up here, just a moment. Mm -hmm. 
So I wanna show you another document that you can download from my website or I can try to attach to chat that provides a whole lot of details about um, the Paycheck Protection Program. So here it comes up on my screen and I'm gonna share it in just a moment. All right. Here we go. So the um, US Chamber of Commerce put out a guide here to coronavirus emergency loans. And you can see, you know, it's giving you some information that we've already talked about that this CARES Act has allocated $350 billion towards these loans. And then there are some, you know, FAQs. Are you eligible? You know, we talked about that a little bit already. What are lenders looking for? We talked about the, the criteria being relaxed. So what they're saying here, what lenders are not gonna look for is you're not gonna have to provide a personal guarantee for the loan. You're not gonna have to provide collateral for the loan like you may have to for the economic injury loan. And it doesn't matter if you sought and were unable to obtain credit elsewhere. So the standards are more relaxed for this one. And then in terms of how much you can borrow, I mean, we talked generally about it's 2.5 times the employer's average monthly payroll costs, but there are some specifics here as well. You know, what is included in payroll costs? Mm -hmm. um, it's not just salary, but it's payment of tips, it's payments for vacation, um, allowances for dismissal or separations of employees, retirement benefits. So there are a whole lot of <laughs> things that are included in what is considered your payroll costs for last year. And so this tells you sort of how to do the math on that, you know, how to figure out what you can apply for. It also tells you what is excluded. And I think one important thing to note here is that if you have, um, workers that earn more than $100,000 per year, the amount in excess of $100,000 cannot be included in the calculation. Mm. So that's one thing to note. And then the last page provides more information about whether the loan will be forgiven. Um, and that's what we were talking about earlier, that you are expected to use these funds for specific items, payroll costs, interest on mortgage, rent, utilities, et cetera. Um, if you don't use it for those purposes or you reduce your number of employees or the in amount of hours that they worked, then some of the forgiveness goes away. So again, I would encourage you to, you know, take a look at what your payroll costs are. And you're going to have to know that information if you apply. And then, you know, if you're not working with a financial professional already, try to do this yourself, you know, so you can get an idea of, you know, what will be forgiven and what you might have to have, you know, what, what you might have to pay back, but at a very low rate. Mm -hmm. That's, that's okay. good. Um, I also have an infographic out on my website that you can take a look at, um, that I'll link to as well, that just gives you a really high level <laughs> about, so everything that we've just talked about now, it's just kind of a little cheat sheet that's not four pages long. Make sense? Yeah, that's brilliant. That's very helpful. I put your website in the chat box um, for folks to take okay. a look at because there's a lot of really good resources out there on your website. Yeah, so I mean, you'll see if you go to the resources page, you're going to find um, this infographic that I just showed you for the Paycheck Protection Program. And there's also a link there to that document that I showed you that has many more details. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a separate article about the economic injury disaster loans that provides more specific information as well and has the link to where you apply. Mm -hmm. That's good. Very mm -hmm. good. So what other questions do, do our audience members have for Rosemary? Feel free to unmute yourself and, and just ask away. You've done a good job, Rosemary, clearly. <laughs> well, if there are no other questions, I mean, I'll add a couple of other things. Um, as I said at the beginning, it is really critical that you forecast your cash position. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't have to be any, anything super fancy. It can be as simple as what I'm about to describe. Um, you know, if you just have a spreadsheet, start with your bank account balance as of the end of last month or at the very beginning of this month. 
And then what you're going to do is you're going to list out all of the cash that's coming into your business. So that could be you know, payments from customers, it could be loan proceeds. So any cash that you have coming into your business is gonna go on that worksheet and you're gonna add it up. What's the total? The next part is you're going to list all of your cash expenditures. So how much cash is going out the door? And you need to be a little bit careful with this, you know, to make sure you double, <coughs> don't double count expenses. And I'll give you an example. Um, a lot of people charge some of their business expenses to their business credit card. Um, so while you may have purchased that item this month, you may not actually be paying your credit card bill until next month. So when you're itemizing all your cash out the door, be aware of that. You know, if you've got something that you've charged to your credit card, be aware of when your due date is for that card so that you know when you're gonna have to pay it. So just to summarize, you started with your beginning bank account balance, then you added up all the cash that's coming in, and you added all the cash that you expect to spend. And so when you add the cash that you're receiving and you subtract the cash that's going out the door, that's kind of your net cash flow for the month, and then you add that or subtract that from your bank account balance to, to get to your ending cash flow. So what do you think your cash is gonna be at the end of next week? You would do that exercise. You start with your bank account, bank account balance at the beginning of the week, and then you list all your cash in and cash out to try to predict what you're gonna have left at the end of the week. Mm -hmm. And in a situation like this, it's good to kind of, keep a 12 or 13 week outlook on cash. So do this exercise every week and try to predict out 12 to 13 weeks. Now, of course, the further you get out, you know, past a few weeks, the harder this is to do. But if you always try to maintain a view of 12 to 13 weeks forward, so when this week is over, you're gonna do it again, and you're gonna add a week onto the end of that forecast. You just wanna keep you know, kind of longer term insight into what kind of cash you're gonna have on hand versus just looking at what's in your bank account. So what, what about um, someone who basically their income has, has dried up? You know, they, they had to shut the business down, maybe they're a, uh, a hands-on service provider, you know, like a spa or, or something mm -hmm. like that, where uh, what, how would you take that same exercise and then begin to make that work for you? Because you realize there's nothing coming in, but there's still, there's still money going out the door, obligations that you have and so forth. And, and that is kind of the essence of the problem, right? You know, when there's no income in, coming in, then that is the time to draw from any emergency savings you have on hand. If you do have a loan from a bank already or a line of credit, that's when you wanna draw from the line of credit that you'll pay back later. Um, another thing to do, just if you don't already have a line of credit, you could apply. I mean, I, am, I can tell you now that right now lenders are just flooded with applications for um, capital, you know, even refinancing mortgages. I think a lot of people are aware that the Fed has dropped rates down to next to zero. And so everyone's trying to refinance and bankers and lenders are really, really busy. Mm -hmm. um, but you could consider, you know, trying to obtain a regular line of credit. Um, some other things that I'm doing with some of my clients have um, debt from before I started working with them at a high interest rate. So we're looking at opportunities to consolidate that debt and refinance it at a lower rate. Um, so drawing on any available reserves, drawing from a working capital line of credit, if you have it, um, unfortunately, you know, the biggest expenses that businesses typically have, number one is payroll. Um, generally rent is up there in the top few as well. And so when you're in a situation like the, the spa situation that you mentioned, you don't have any income, you know, you don't have, uh, you still have some costs. I mean, unfortunately, you are going to have to lay off some of your employees. Hopefully you can hire them back. Um, but you have to focus on the critical expenses that you have to pay. And if there are no, no clients to serve, then you don't need your massage therapists and your estheticians and whatnot. But going back to that original point that we talked about at the beginning with revenue is I would encourage you to try to be creative about what you can do differently. So a spa, for instance, maybe they, um, maybe they launch a social media campaign where they're trying to sell more gift cards. 
um, like gift cards that you could use at a later date. So things like that, just anything that you can do to kind of bring in some revenue while you're cutting your costs and just trying to stay afloat. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. applying for these relief um, programs as well, like the PPP and the disaster loans. Mm -hmm. Great. Do you have a question? Chat. Can we talk about the new PTO FMLA benefits employees may be eligible for and how that might affect cash flow? Yes. Okay, um, so that is a little bit out of my scope. Um, I am not an HR expert, so I would be reluctant to give you information about that. I don't wanna give you incorrect information and, and regulatory compliance with, with personnel related issues is really important. Um, so unfortunately, I don't think I can answer that question, but w a word of caution to you, um, if you are laying off employees you, and you are not an HR ex expert and you don't have an HR expert in-house, I would really encourage you to maybe talk to your payroll company, for instance. A lot of payroll companies like ADP or others offer HR services that can help guide you through these things, um, because if you if you kind of stumble with how you do this and you do something incorrectly, you're opening yourself up to a financial risk of your employees coming back and saying, you know, I was wrongfully terminated or having some kind of wage claim against you. So when you're laying people off or you're taking other personal actions, it's critically important that you dot all your I's and you cross all your T's in terms of your paperwork and the processes that you have in place for doing so. You really need to have documentation. Um, I say this because I have seen a client um, have a former employee come after him after she left the company for an absolutely ridiculous reason. He hadn't done anything wrong, but this stuff happens. It happens a good amount in California. California is extremely friendly to employees versus employers. So just be careful. You know, mm -hmm. I can't answer the question, but, but please do, you know, look for someone who can, that can give you good HR or labor law advice. Well, I was thinking about the provision in the, the Paycheck Protection Act as well. And, and please correct me if I use the wrong term. Mm -hmm. um, but said that some of your loan may be forgiven and then the, the cases where it might not be forgiven because you had uh, not brought people back or you used mm -hmm. it you know, inappropriately, that kind of thing. So I would think that even before somebody applies for this kind of relief, maybe they, they run that by somebody about here's what I think I'm going to do with this money, or here's what my plan is in five months, say, or you know, whatever. I mean, wouldn't wouldn't that make sense to make sure that you that you dot all of your I's and cross all of your T's? I, I do think so from two perspectives. You know, if you're laying off employees, absolutely get the HR and legal advice. Um, if you're thinking about applying for loans and you really don't know how to do this or you need guidance. Um, you know, seek a financial professional. I've already had a lot of clients and others tell me that they started to fill out the application and they just weren't sure where to get some of the information. Um, you know, which financial statement to get their list of assets and liabilities. Mm -hmm. So if you need assistance, definitely ask. Um, but with this Paycheck Protection Program, as long as you're spending the funds on those items that we discussed, you should be okay. Um, where you have to worry about it not being completely forgiven is when, you know, you've severely cut wages for people or hours or laid off people and you're not bringing them back. And I just want to read one thing out loud about that from that document that I showed you earlier about, it says, what if I bring back employees or I restore wages? Um, so reductions in unemployment or reductions in employment or wages that occurred during the period that starts on February 15th of this year and ends 30 days after enactment of the CARES Act will not reduce the loan forgiveness if by June 30th of this year, the borrower eliminates the reduction employees or in wages. So in plain English, what's that? What that is saying? <laughs> you say, wow, yeah, plain English, please. <laughs> yeah, if you elim if you eliminate these people, but you bring them back by June thirtieth, two thousand twenty, that some of this loan, you know, some of the reduction in forgiveness is not going to apply. So you can lay off people, and you can bring them back, and you can still get some forgiveness. Okay. Okay. 
Is there a, a rule about double dipping? Like if you uh, lay an employee off and then they're collecting unemployment while they're laid off and then you bring them back, you're, mm -hmm. you're not going to want to restore all of their wages from the time that they were laid off, right? Because they would be, they would have already been collecting unemployment. Oh, definitely. So you wouldn't be paying them for those few months where you had laid them off and that, that was the point of laying them off so that you don't have to pay those and they might have been collecting unemployment, yes. Okay. okay. Um, just another thing to note with unemployment, I mean, this is un unavoidable, but when you are laying off people, um, you know, as an employer, you probably know that you pay payroll taxes and some of those taxes go to the unemployment insurance fund. And so when you have a lot of employees making claims for unemployment, your unemployment insurance rate for payroll purposes is probably going to go up, you know, in the future. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there's really not much you can do about that. I mean, if, if you're laying employees off, you obviously want them to get any kind of financial support that they can. Okay. What right. else? Anything else? Any other questions, folks? Lori, you've got a twofer going on there, so. <laughs> <laughs> and then just, you know, do some Googling because there are other programs out there that can help you with your personal finances too. I mean, as small business owners, especially if your business is very small, um, your business and your personal finances are often very interconnected. Mm -hmm. And so even things like, you know, SDG&E, for instance, here in San Diego, our major utility, has said that they are not gonna turn off service for people that are late in paying their bills. They're not gonna assess penalties. Um, again, like we talked about at the beginning, you know, if you're not paying a bill right now, you're deferring it, you're still gonna have to pay it at some point. So be, be aware of that. But just do a little Googling and see what's available in your area to not only help you out with your business finances, but give you some relief on the personal end too. Yeah, and that was good advice about checking out industry specific because I, you know, I have seen things going around where, where a specific industry is trying to help their, their members, you know, basically. Mm -hmm. I've seen that with my clients. I've seen specific things for restaurants. I've seen specific things for healthcare providers. Yeah. So it really just depends on what business you're in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Question, or actually I was, I was gonna share a couple of things that just yeah. regarding the SBA disaster loan. I mm -hmm. pulled it out last week. I think it was when I started on Monday or something. I had to do it at night because it was, um, it was actually to fall people were all trying to get on it was really there was actually quite a bit to it and at the time from home I didn't have the tax returns they wanted and um, so I was gonna finish it up uh, bottom line is it came out again as you were talking about the second one mm -hmm. and I thought well I can't ask any questions because there's no one you know you have to email them so I went ahead and filled it out again and it took uh, 20 minutes Oh, it's way different. Well, that's really um, it, interesting. Yeah, it was um, no tax returns. Uh, super simple. I mean, you had to put your yearly sales, annual, your cost of goods, mm -hmm. um, budget. I mean, it was really simple. So I, I would encourage everybody to go ahead and do that if, if that's of interest. All um, right, what was that one? That's the SBA disaster loan assistance uh, the link that you shared okay yeah the yeah. link that's up um right below the zoom link that i accidentally yeah. pasted in so there's that one and you can apply for both that and the ppp um yeah. i'm hearing that you may be able to roll any loan that you get from disaster loan into the ppp but i'm not sure yet i mean again there's still so many details coming out and like Lori just said i mean from the time you first applied started applying for that um, program and then went back, it had changed. So a lot of things are changing. A lot of information is coming out daily, um, but there's still several unknowns, like where's the application for the PPP? <laughs> right, right. Okay. Um, one other thing I, that I was going to comment on is uh, Coastal Peril is a lo local pig yes. payroll company that I've been using for about 11 years. Um, mm -hmm. They're really good. They've got an HR department. They will get on the phone with you. They have webinars almost every day on updates about the laws. 
um, there's always somebody to talk to. So I think I pay an extra $40 a month for that service to where, I mean, they even for free wrote my um, employee handbook. Yeah, those so are excellent great services. Company. Yeah, I, re I refer clients to Coastal too. I think they're one of the best in San Diego and you make a great point, but if you already have a payroll service, many of them offer these add-on HR services um, for a reasonable cost each month versus going out to a, you know, an employment attorney and paying him or her 400 bucks an hour for some, for some advice. So check that out. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for updating us on how long it took because you, you could see that that application that I showed you when I was sharing my screen still said it was going to take two hours. So I'm glad to hear it took less time. Yeah. Good. All right. Any other questions? Any last thoughts that you want to share with us, Rosemary? Um, I think, you know, again, the cash forecasting is really key. I mean, you don't want to be flying blind. I always say you need to know your numbers and I see far too many business owners try to do math in their heads and you know think that they've got it all figured out and then when i actually have them you know look at it on a spreadsheet or start writing things down the situation looks very different so don't assume that you you've got it all covered in your head really take the time to do this exercise and if you need help then seek assistance you know i can help you other financial professionals can help you but you don't have to go it alone Ask her What's the best way to reach you, Rosemary? Is it by phone or go to your website? Yeah, you can go to my website. Um, I'll also in the chat here just type my email address. It's rosemary at momentumcfo.com. And then I'll put my number in here too. It's 858 2840314. And again, if you go over to the Momentum CFO website and look under resources, you're going to find a lot more information, some of which we covered on the call about the PPP program and the disaster loans. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Thank you so much, Rosemary, for, for bringing your expertise here. I know that this was very helpful to everyone who was on the call, as well as those folks that will be listening to it afterwards. So again, thanks so much. And thanks to all of you who joined us today. And uh, be sure that you reach out to Rosemary. And um, if you've got any questions about this, don't. I think that's one of the coolest things about going through this, this time together is that we are all in this together, you know, so there's no shortage of, of help. So I encourage all of you to, to take care of yourselves, take care of your business and reach out to Rosemary with any questions that you might have. So, all right. Thanks again. Thanks. Good luck everybody. Bye.